Thank you both for coming this morning to a distinguished crowd. I think there are some more of you who have to value some of the people who have to carry on the on the embankment for some of the girls. Um, uh, as you, some of you know, those of you who know the Balls Exchange well, will know that over the last year we've quite a lot of work on strengthening the productive base of the British economy. We've been working on everything from renewing our infrastructure to making the public sector more productive. We've been doing everything from the financial reform to welfare reform. And I'm really pleased this morning to be talking about manufacturing, which is something I'm personally very passionate about. Um, as a free marketeer, uh, or it seems to me that we don't want to get into business with the union leaders, we don't even really want to get into business with favouring one sector over another. But it does seem to me that manufacturing is very important because it's the area that comes where productivity grows fastest. And if you look at the British economy as a whole over the last 20 years, uh, productivity grows by about 1.9% a year. In manufacturing, So we should certainly care about manufacturing. Uh, and over the last couple of months, we've been doing some work about how we can create the right conditions for manufacturing to flourish. And it seems to me that there are some sensible things that we can do to create a better business environment. Um, I'd like to start with Andy, perhaps, John Wilmer and Anne Zachary, who have been leading this project for policy exchange. Um, they've already published two short research notes, which hopefully some of you have managed to pick up. Um, one is on um, tax and the role of government in the system, which is very important. And the other one's on the science skills, the science based skills. And shortly we'll be publishing another note on innovation in universities, which is something we've been talking about today. And um, all the proceedings of today's session are going to be feeding into a final report on manufacturing, which will be out before the end of the year. Um, I'm really pleased that so many really good uh, people from the industry have joined us today. Um, I'm also pleased that people from business and from both the main political parties are here. Um, I'm incredibly um, pleased to be able to introduce a man who doesn't really need any introduction to people's office this morning, someone who's done every single important job in government. A man who brings this kind of world out, sadly, with nearly 40 years of level political experience. Um, I would introduce him as uh, Victoria's answer to Peter Manson, but I'm going to be easily misconstrued with that. In no way, it's not. Um, uh, my pleasure to introduce the Shadow Secretary of State of Business, Ken Clark. Financial crises becoming ever more frequent. I hope the momentum 
matter of regulating the banks uh, internationally and nationally is not going to go as soon as we see the first flickers of recovery. The howls of outrage from every sector of the financial world about the disasters that will ensue if any proposals that have taken forward, the Franco-German plot against London, what kind of, makes me think we're probably proceeding along the white line. <laughs> Certainly the kind of thing we would have got out of the city of London at any stage in the last five years and we talked of any regulation at all. Uh, but uh, because it is so volatile, because uh, until we do really adjust to uh, globalised financial markets and really get down to making them a little safer, we run the risk of the ever recurring uh, moments. It is more important than ever that we rebalance our economy. I will take that as red, therefore, and I will also take it as red that the key things for every branch of uh, business and industry, manufacturing and services of all kinds, is that we get the taxation system right and that we uh, also that we deregulate outside the financial services industry, not to lower standards of protection of the public, but in order to protect those standards in a more sensible, less costly, burdensome way. And that concentrates on genuine risk and allows the compliant and responsible company not to waste too much time and money on dealing with endless regulation and inspectors. That is all work in hand. Well, what looks to manufacturing in particular, because I'm supposed to be opening for 10 minutes and taking questions, at the moment uh, I find myself concentrated on two areas which I think are particularly relevant to manufacturing. One is uh, skills. Uh, and the other is capital markets, and access to capital for where we all know where we're going, uh, which is into the higher value end of manufacturing, high tech, and so on, which is where I think everybody's intuition is the, the future lies. That, that is the area we particularly have to concentrate, to make sure we have the kind of manufacturing base that a developed country uh, can compete from. Uh, I do think. Uh, it's, it's rather simple. The, the, the government has come to this position again very recently. Um, and I look across at the department I'm shadowing, and I, I think work is in hand uh, on both these subjects, uh, just as it is in the opposition. I think we have more excuse. We have six months to prepare for government, we hope. Uh, and I, I, I hope that Lord Manderson has not been too affected by the fact that six months to campaign to minimise the damage. Uh, he, he is, uh, the, which means that the badging of things and the instant announcement of things that were already and so on tends to run ahead of any reality. I mean, nothing, no thought had been given, giving any support to manufacturing in particular until about 12 months ago, and most of his colleagues are dominated either by the thought of what they're going to say in the election or what job they're going to do afterwards. So there are parts of the white hall not functioning at all. A lot of statements, a lot of projects are coming out of the Department of Business and Industry, uh, Business and Innovation, uh, but the, the, the content of them, the delivery of them is early because they are at the moment practically the stage being think tank ideas with officials desperately trying to work up the rules upon which they're going to disperse the tons of cash or whatever it is they disperse. Let me begin by skills, which I'll take, I'll take a wider view of that. I take it as given again that we do need to increase the supply of science, engineering graduates. The, we produce pretty high quality engineers in this country. We have a good base of uh, pure science, but we actually don't produce people with the necessary skills for technological innovation in the right numbers, and of course, technical skills, the, uh, the skilled workforce that you require uh, at, at uh, non-higher education level, people still talk about skills shortages in the way they did 40 years ago in Britain. It's a long-standing problem, and we don't sometimes seem to me to be much nearer to cracking it. Now, I think this is quite key, because you're not going to developing its expand on and expand the manufacturing base of this country given what's happening in markets if you don't produce the very high quality people in greater numbers and to higher levels than we used to in the past. 